Hello guys, I welcome you back to another episode on JFP TV. My name is Fabricio and today I have the great honor to do again a motivational podcast with Master Coach Nuno Damaso. We will do today a special topic, actually five topics. I will read it out for you. First is health definition, what's health? Second is what about illness? Then what resources do we have? Prevention and self-care and also how to be responsible for that. And the fifth is consumerist attitude and self-responsibility. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope you have to enjoy this episode. Also like, share and subscribe to don't miss any other episodes in this channel. And like always, welcome at JFP TV. All right, my friend, how are you? How are you feeling? Very fine, thank you. What about you? Well, not bad. I had a week off, so I'm freshly uh, freshly at work. T- ten years younger, huh? Yeah, That's ten good. years younger. <laughs> and it's, it's actually quite, uh, quite um, good for this topic today. Health definition, taking care of yourself. This, this week was the first week I took care of myself, so I know exactly what you meant. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm afraid too late. No, no, not too late. I'm very full recovered. It's really ima- immense, um, important. I, I already told you I will take like every weekend, once a month, a uh, weekend off just to not knowing anything about the world, about COVID, about politics, not everything. Just, just very good. like you said, stillness. Yeah. Stillness yeah, is yeah. the key. Like water. Be water. And yeah. what was funny, what was fun- funny is I did the clips from the podcast. <laughs> so I did all, pod- I, I watched all podcasts again. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm, now I'm prepared. Very good. But uh, the, the today's topic you had uh, in mind for a special reason because it's obviously like right now actual. I, like th- I think it's very very actual. So the the, the title of the podcast is a "Be Your Own Doctor." Yeah, it's, it's a little bit provocative um, title, but it should remember us that we are responsible for our health, and this is a very important point, especially now in this insecure time. Um, to keep the responsibility about our health is very, is very important, but it's important in general, no? Mm-hmm. So I would start with a citation of the Dalai Lama. Um, a journalist asked him what surprised him the most uh, in the humanity. So the answer is funny because a part of the answer is concerning the health. Yeah. And perhaps uh, another part of the answer is concerning what we are living now. So the answer... A man surprised me most about humanity because he sacrificed his health in order to make money. Then he sacrificed money to recuperate his health. And then he is so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being that he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as he is never going to die and then dies having never really lived. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> really, really what's happening right now, actually. There are a lot of things now, a eh? lot yeah, of things. Yeah. Uh, we are all full of fear, what is coming in the future. Yeah. It's not so easy to stay in the present. Same time... Um, yeah, we, we are not really living. Huh? But we have no choice now. Yeah. This situation, this is the positive of this situation. It brings us in the present because there's no alternative. Yeah, we're not <laughs> no, knowing no what's happening then yeah. one year later. But for our topic today, the, the important point for me was this. Um, we sacrifice our health for money, for job. Mm-hmm. And when the health is gone, we think naively, I want to say stupidly, that we can buy it back. Yeah. Um, yes, we will put efforts, we will put money, we will uh, have a good coach like you. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know if we can uh, handle health that way. Yeah. Like a, like a product. You, you can't you can't uh, go back in time and prevent certain things you did wrong. For example, eating wrong, like a lifetime. Yeah. Smoking. Exactly. Or sleeping too less. So so even if if you're fifty and. Uh, financially so free that you could uh, buy everything you see it a lot in in um in yeah over 50 year old really rich businessmen they have like bad angles bad joints a heart issue have to take drugs every day for just uh, maintaining health 
So it's there is no magic pill then after that. So there could be some better way, no? Yeah. So if we look at the definition of health, um, a definition which um, stand very many long time and still many people um, will speak about health like this, um, the state of being free from illness or injury. So this would be health to be free from illness or injury. Mm -hmm. And um, my point of view is a very, very pessimistic definition. Uh, it's also suggesting that to be healthy would be something abnormal. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we had such a, a normal relationship with, uh, with uh, illness that we are not able to say health is the normal state of a Actually, should being. that be, yeah, that should be health. That, that should be the standard to be healthy. Look at the nature. We are part of nature and then the nature is an, armo is an harmonious dance mm -hmm. and you always find a way and adapt and regulate and yeah. you regenerate and we, we are nature. So this is very um, victim role to, to think uh, illness should be something normal, no? Yeah. Yeah. But... The mentality changed, no? And then um, the WHO, they have a new definition many years ago now. Uh, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So we have to co live with illness, actually, and just don't feel like that. Yeah. That's a new definition. Yeah, and what I like in this definition is, is a bit a holistic um, definition. We have the mental mm -hmm. and the social aspect, not only the physical body ah, as, that's, as yeah. a machine. No? Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. Um, I think also the new term is the social because we, we like underestimated a long time ago the social interactions, exactly. mobbing and whatever, like a good exactly. job. It's very important. Yeah, and, and in this new definition, it also rejects the old definition about the absence of infirmity. Mm -hmm. So we don't need a negation, a negation to justify health. Yeah. Why not be simply healthy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, why not? Yeah. What, what is so incredible to that, no? But I think in, in the heads of a lot of people, there's, there, is there is still that. I mean, for example, when I talk with my parents, and I tell them, hey, please, are you exercising? Are you going for a walk? Please go for that. And they say, yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm fit. I'm healthy. They are not, they're just not ill. And which is really like frustrating because when you are healthy, when, when I'm healthy and fit, mm -hmm. like after my vacation one week, I feel totally different than I, where I was one or two weeks ago where I didn't, I, I wasn't ill, but I was not really healthy. I was like not sleeping enough, mm -hmm. like a little bit like on the edge. I think you noticed a little bit. Yeah. I said, oh, oh, no, no, don't worry. I will do it. And uh, one day later, I forgot. So mental stress, social, everything is, is important. It's not just that you are healthy because you're not ill. Well, I like very much the, the point you, you, you want to point out now. It's very important because it's a balance, no? It's a balance and we should not be at the extremes yeah. to realize I'm, I'm fit or I, I'm ill. But uh, coming to the next definition, we call um, homeostasis, huh? state yeah, of balance. The homeostasis. It's, a, it's a, a common term in the physio, um, physio in the trainingslehre in, uh, when, when I teach the young guys, like the balance. The, so the, we... the, the definition is a little bit uh, more complex. The ability or tendency of a living organism, cell or group to keep the condition inside in the same, despite any change in the condition around or the state of internal balance. So this definition speaks about a state of dynamic balance and adaptation, no? regardless of external conditions. Yeah. Actually, uh, it would be the job of the immune system if yeah. it's doing a good job, if we take care of it. no. Yeah. And uh, I like very much the idea that this ability, regardless of what is happening outside, we can keep balance inside mentally, and physically, no? Yeah, that that should the nor that should be the normal, the normal uh, time. Yeah. The normality. My my English is rusty. One week without you, my English is rusty. <laughs> you are not going to learn English from me, but <laughs> <laughs> we, we pra practice makes the mastery. You yeah, told me yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We find a way together. So another definition of health is the Chinese medicine. 
And here I make it a little bit short because it's a huge definition, but I like very much that one. The health concept of Chinese medicine includes the holistic view of union between man and universe, the harmonious unity of fusion of shape and soul. So we see the human as a microcosmos in a macrocosmos, mm -hmm. huh? and the relation between heaven and earth, yin and yang, we are part of the nature, and here is very clearly a, a body and soul concept. Huh? Yeah. What we also have our day in the definition of the VAO, uh, mental and social well-being. So more and more we understand the importance of the mental health or emotions or social life on our health. What is a, it used to be um, exclusive from the alternative medicine, mm -hmm. but now I think that everybody understood how important it is to, to take care about our, our emotions. Yeah, of you know? themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, health is a dynamic process that we must take care of consciently, and it's never granted. It's not enough to say, yeah. I have no illness, as you said from your parent. It's mm -hmm. never granted, no? Um, you can't, you can't just, you can't know that. That's, that's the thing. Yep. And um, we have to invest something, no? To invest time and awareness mm -hmm. and um, invest thankfulness, perhaps. Yeah. To, to be conscious uh, that um, health is the biggest gift we have, is the base from everything. So what, what you're actually saying, if I understood you wrong, uh, right, is that we have to invest time, we have to do things, eat a uh, good, good amount of food to be healthy, that it's not just there. Sure. I think it would be very naive and some kind arrogant mm -hmm. to just take this huge gift as something normal. I, may, I mean, um, we have rules, everything is interacting and mm -hmm. uh, you want something good, you have to do something for it, no? And uh, health is such a gift that we, we should take care every day about it. Yeah, every day. but, we, but that, uh, only a few people really do that. So meditate, yeah. eat good food, not just tasty food, yeah. train or just exercise a, a little bit. Yeah, we, we will come to these points, no? Um, that, that brings us to, to illness, no? Mm -hmm. We don't really take care consciously about the health. And we, we think, oh, suddenly I'm healed now. And it came from nowhere. I'm a, I'm, I'm a victim. Uh, it's not my fault. I need to go to the doctor to fix or to do something. Yeah. But if we consider that health is a dynamic process, I also believe that illness is a dynamic process. What I'm trying to say is illness do doesn't not come just by ar itself. around the corner yeah. Thursday morning because it's Thursday. Yeah. It's the result of a long-term process, uh, uh, and generally a disharmonious process. My behavior, mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. social life, my food habits, my lack of movement. Yeah, well, what, you, what you're saying reminds me strongly about something I wrote when I was studying nutrition. Uh, well, not studying, I just like not, not in the university as a degree health uh, or, or nutrition coach. You can just do like your degrees in different kind of academies but when I was studying like about nutrition my then teacher told me um, inflammations are actually the key I think you are, you are uh, agreeing to that like for example when you go to the dentist and you have a lot of, of uh, teeth issues there is proof that f uh, years from like four years or five years after you are constantly having something with your paratontose or inflammations in your mouth or teeth, you will give you will get a heart attack. You told me that. Huh? Yeah, and and that stuck by me. But it's it's actually really uh, interesting because inflammations are a lot of um, are able to do a lot more damage than we thought. And it's not just that you take an anti-inflammatory or so like you told me last time. You are just um, like fighting the symptoms. But the source is never really questioned and it, it might be that your lifestyle, your nutrition or whatever is causing it. Mm. But the, the, the symptom or like the mm. end, like oh, a heart attack, mm. is not really an illness. It's like, like, you told, like you told me right now, it's a little steps 
it's in the right in the wrong of, direction end of a process yeah no what what i keep from from what you say is we always get signals mm -hmm. but we are not used to read the signals we don't think we are enough competent to read the signals and we think some other professional should see the signals for us should take care of our problems not yeah. we are not not uh, not we yeah, ourselves the, the funny point is the signals they come long time before the problem exactly yeah. and if we don't listen to that and the program problem will come yeah. no? so what I'm, i'm trying to say here we have to understand that we play a tremendous role in the management of our health and only reacting when we are ill mm -hmm. is like very immature is like uh, not enough self love self care mm -hmm. awareness because normally when we are ill we we push it too far yeah. if we accept illness as something normal there is not a problem but if we accept health as normal as normal then to let it go till there is some kind disrespectful mm -hmm. and irresponsible yeah from from ourselves to ourselves no that reminds me strongly uh, of a story actually it happened like four days ago uh coach Laurie, she fell down from the shower uh, accident at home like a lot of like the majority the majority of accidents happen at home mm -hmm. not from her <laughs> from, from uh, the statistics and uh, she fell on the head like doof. So uh, she told me, she told me, and I said, "Hey, go to the emergency." And she said, "No, no, it's all, it's all fine." And so one day passed, two days passed. So actually, she has a lot of head headache since then. So after three days, she called the doctor, and I was already a little bit angry because I told her, "Listen, if you would have a child, maybe like teenager, like your height, and would tell you that, what would you tell her?" immediately go to the emergency but for her and sorry when you're listening or watching <laughs> she she didn't think that she said no no it's all fine it's all good i'm invincible and a lot of people try to think that way they don't take care of themselves so that's that's what you are um that's that's the topic of today to taking responsibility of yourself when you accept that health is actually the normality not normality mm -hmm. And someone or something is trying to take it away. And sometimes yourself is trying to take <laughs> your health away. You would fight for it to keeping it. And this is, this is reminding me of something else. I think you will agree. We had a long, long time of a good economy, of a, of a, a good economy, not globally, but in Switzerland, I can yeah. say. And now things are happening. We are, we are out of control and everything we are doing is saying, hey, this is not normality. I know. What's happening? Someone has to take care of it. Someone has to give us help and that and that and that. Obviously, there can be help. Obviously, there can be solutions. But we never thought that normality should actually be that we are very, very happy and uh, like lucky to have a, a stable economy and not like a dictator or whatever or a right or left push and then everything is, is demolished like it happened in Peru, mm -hmm. so like the country I'm coming yeah, from. Very good, yeah. So that's that's maybe my my thinking also which makes it mm. a little bit differently but it surprises me mm. you're you're putting exactly in the right words what I was experiencing this week when I would fall the, I fall off on my head well my head is like everything you know <laughs> with age you lose a lot of things I lost all, all my muscles on my head my head is a little bit like the priority number one right now but if I would like fell on I'm on my knee I would take care of it mm. There are a lot of people who not listen, not even to the parents, not even to the friends, mm -hmm. and they just accept things like they would be, like like Dalai Lama in their in his quote, um, "Live forever," mm -hmm. which is crazy, which is really really crazy. You you, I like very much the comparison about the the social well being of our society, mm -hmm. what we think is granted, and our health, which we treat the same. Um, you you bring me to an anecdote, to a small story. I had the chance to to learn Taekwondo from a Korean old master, mm -hmm. and he learned it really the hard, hard, hard way, the military style. So he was a very tough person. But when he when he was injured some, somewhere, 
he was taking care so softly, so like, what is that? I was surprised. It, it even looks ridiculous for me. Yeah. And really so softly. And then when we didn't take care of ourselves, he was a very gentle man. But when we didn't take care about ourselves, he gets so angry. And he's, I, I never forgot that one. He said to us, why do you learn self-defense? You are even not able to defend yourself from yourself, to, to respect yourself. Huh? Yeah. So why you need self-defense from outside if you even don't treat yourself good? And that was the purpose why he was so caring with himself. And mm -hmm. he was a tough man, but he learned to respect Mm -hmm. This gift from the hells, no? That reminds me to another thing, which I, which is fascinating. I think Les Brown was the was the guy who uh, I from whom I uh, listened to the first time. He said the biggest enemy is not the uh, the enemy outside. The biggest enemy is the enemy inside. You never notice him, and he's like sabotaging your health, your your thoughts. Mm -hmm. everything yeah that's just, actually it's always the same topic mm -hmm. so my, my my biggest question is how can we avoid it no no i think it's a yes. th third topic so yeah <laughs> in, in, instead of of uh, speaking about stress mm -hmm. let's speak about resources our resources no? I'm, I'm right curious right now so i will take it from the point of view from the chinese medicine and make some bridge to our culture in the in the chinese medicine uh, we make a difference between our prenatal energy and postnatal energy. So the prenatal energy in our medicine will be our genetics, our genes. Today we know from the science that the genes are not something static. We can have a lot of influence on it. Mm -hmm. We know it today also. But uh, in the Chinese, they believed, especially the Taoists, mm -hmm. uh, when a couple, they decide to, to make a kid, they try to give the best condition for these kids. So before um, procreating, they try to live an harmonious life. So um, a lot of culture, mm, a lot in yeah. the nature, uh, good talking, nice habits, good food. And when they're always in a state of harmony, at that moment, they try to procreate. Mm -hmm. Because they believe that this prenatal energy will go into the genes of the, of the kid, and will, this will be his basic energy. Mm -hmm. They believe this is in the kidney, they call it the gene, and it's like our capital. So basically, in that energy, we have no influence come from our parents. The old Taoists, they believe we can influence it with Tai Chi and Qigong meditation, but basically in Chinese medicine, we used to believe this is something we just receive. Yeah. But then we have a lot of other sources of energy in Chinese medicine. Um, for example, the qi from the air, what we breathe, the oxygen. Um, the good news is still free of charge. <laughs> and yes. it, it, it's the same among for everybody on the planet, no? Mm -hmm. But we don't understand. We, also this, we take it as granted. We don't understand that the simple fact to inhale and exhale and to breathe deeply and consciously could have a huge influence on our health, especially on our stress, stress level, and give us a lot of energy. So this is the chi from, from the air, working in the pulmons. Then naturally, we have the chi from the food, as uh, in Chinese medicine, spleen and stomach transform this chi in energy. But this is nothing special we also have in, in, in the Western culture. From mm -hmm. the food, we get the energy. The difference is, in Western culture, we see the food as the first and only energy. Mm -hmm. In Chinese culture believes that the chi from the air is one source, the chi from the food is one source, and the chi from our thoughts, they call it the shen, from the mind, the way we think, the way we, we plan our life, we can imagine big things, we can create, we can be innovative, and this is also a source of energy. So we already have three sources, not only the food, no? Yeah. And for me, it's important that we realize 
that we can nourish ourselves. I can breathe. I breathe anyway till the last day. Mm-hmm. But I can breathe consciently and with some thankfulness, realizing this is a fantastic source of energy, is a capital of energy, and is so important for my for my inner balance. Yeah, it's, it's like really like financial capital when you are when you are investing it after one day of eating good or one week of exercising, you are not having a lot of capital in the bank account. And when you have an illness, maybe that's like your saving or the savings are like. Poof, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or when you have an inju- uh, injury, this is the phenomenon when when athletes injure themselves and normal people would have sometimes the same, um, for example, injuries like Kreuzbandriss at the, at the knee, which I'm actually not really sure if it's only that, but let's assume that it's only that, that an athlete is so well trained that he can he or she can recuperate faster after an injury than a normal human. And then the normal normal humans, like like I am also normal human. I'm not uh, like 16 hours a day, like taking much care of myself and training four hours a day, like a, a pro football or soccer player. But anyway, what I mean, what I mean is, normal people think, ah, he's cheating. He's maybe taking some drugs, steroids, or whatever. I'm not. I'm not. Don't know. I can't know that. But what I know is that when you are um, a normal behaving person and you have an issue and you see another person it has the same issue illness or or injury and is recuperating very fast your reaction is can't be really that bad this is not the same that i had doping doping yeah <laughs> or or whatever it was not so hard as an accident as you had so this is just a reminder it's like when i understand that mm. like what you're saying it's like the same thing with with finances and mm. i'm not i'm not saying that i was like born and i a financial uh, genius i had also to, to learn my my things doing the bad things mm-hmm. to spending all my money and then i was like okay where is my money gone <laughs> so where is my health gone you know? yeah, yeah, why, yeah. why do i have headache go, but gone, gone is gone no gone, gone is, is gone. gone yeah and finally the the combination of all these energies uh, is, is the Wei Qi, what they call the immune system. And why I speak about it? Because it's not something which is just there. It's something I build with my behavior and I can take the responsibility for it. So we are really speaking about prevention. Prevention, no? Um, in the Chinese medicine, you, you take care of many parameters, no? Uh, have influence on the health. The food, the Chinese, they used to say, the first medicine is the food. Um, the majority of the men, they know exactly what oil and what um, fuel they put in their car. Many times they are more, more in love in their car than in their body. But we eat some McDonald's garbage mm-hmm. and we give everything to the body. Um, and we are surprised when we are sick. When I go to the Migro or to the Corp and I look what people put in their, in their, in their back. Sometimes I'm so shocked. At, I'm very, very direct, very honest. Really junk food, junk food, junk food. And you cannot expect uh, to be healthy after that. Yeah. The funny point is there are still many people don't make a, a direct relationship. Their behavior, their habits, and their health, because they really think Somebody out there is responsible for my for my health. It's, it's not so easy to really understand I have the full power mm-hmm. and responsibility. We don't like to have power. <laughs> why, why do you think that we have this thought? I will come to this point a little bit All later right. with your permission. Yeah, which is a very important topic. Yeah, because, because it's the first question you have in mind when you say when you say that. I think a lot of people think really that way. Yeah. So the, the emotions same, no? Um, the emotions, the emotions, the emotions. Oh, that's not my problem. That's for the psychologue. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same attitude. Mm-hmm. But actually, we know in the Chinese medicine you speak about the five emotions, work, negative, eh? working with five uh, organs, mm-hmm. and delegate from there a lot of different pathologies. So 
it's very clear that an emotion can attack an organ, and then you have a, a list of possible pathologies in um, accordance with this emotion, with a lot of time have also to do with your basic constitution. So we know that in Chinese medicine. Can, can you tell me a little bit more about that? For example, what, which, which organ would do that, would, would do what? So an example, um, anger. Mm -hmm. Anger now, um, no anger in Chinese medicine also works with uh, frustration. Uh, emotions that we cannot express, they stuck. And uh, in Chinese medicine, the liver, liver mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is not only clean, cleansing the blood, but it's also cleansing the emotions. And if the liver is stuck, it will not deliver the blood and the qi, the energy, to the other organs, and you will have a lot of digestive problems. So this is an example. I think it's a very actual example, because we are all very frustrated. We cannot express and move as we used to move. Mm -hmm. And um, very interesting to, to notice, so this is the liver. But um, anger, have you noticed, Fabrizio, that people which have, um, what do you call, um, hepatitis, mm -hmm. they are very um, easy, angry. Mm -hmm. Their liver is already attacked. And this produces the contrary. The emotion is already there because mm -hmm. this organ responsible for this emotion is already touched. Yeah. And you could go like this with the five organs. Huh? Well, what's really, it's, I, I find that really fascinating because um, what, what first comes in my mind is when people th th um, hear about emotions, they right away do that. Weakness? Right? weakness? No, no, like skeptic skepticism because when you say emotions there there is nothing we can touch we can measure but actually what i learned with time is exactly exactly what you said emotions are just like the catalysator catalyst for biochemical uh, process in in our processes in our body so when you are saying an angry person or a person with anger issues is developing something in delivery is for me very logical because I'm not seeing an emotion fly, uh, flying by in your body and doing <laughs> invisible damage, which a lot of people I'm think I'm I'm thinking will understand that and they will say mm, Chinese medicine is like hocus pocus. Very naive. Yeah. But it's actually really like an old way of thinking which is coming right now more and more because of evidence that the effects of how we think is actually changing the matter in our in our bodies, which is nothing really hocus pocus, no, nothing really magical there. I mean, today we can we can measure it, no? We, yeah. we see which hormone is uh, is very yeah, present. Yeah, exactly. For, uh, for example, cortisol, like stress hormone, and is the most typical today, no? Yeah, exactly. And this is like ninety percent of the time is always there. And it, and the most stupid thing is you can take um, medicine to re to reduce cortisol. But that's not that's not that's the not solution. The source. No. So yes, to to learn to deal with our emotions is a part of health. But again, we should accept the idea first mm -hmm. that emotion plays a big role in our health. Second, that we are enough qualified, clever, to handle with our emotions if we have the courage to look at them and to be aware of them to take them seriously as a, a very major, 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 major point of our health, no? Um, it, yes. So in Chinese medicine, there's a fantastic um, uh, sentence, which I like a lot. They say, the heart should be anchored in the Shen. The Shen is the mind. Eh? So our life, our heart, our purpose mm -hmm. should be one. In other words, we should always try to be in balance, no? Yeah. Uh, we remember homeostasis, no? Exactly. Illness is a state of disbalance. And who have responsibility for balance in our life? Ourselves. Ourselves, no? I repeat again, we should have enough guts, mm -hmm. courage to accept this responsibility. We are not a victim. We can build our life the way we want mm -hmm. or even adapt when necessary. We cannot always change everything, but we have the power to regulate our life. Doing that, we regulate our health. And this responsibility is, is a huge topic. Um, 
we should also speak about healthy lifestyle and, and social life, no? Mm -hmm. Which are part, um, as we saw. So is, is that the part of the prevention or we are still at the resources we are having? Um, because the, 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 the healthy lifestyle is, I think, something we can change, but not like from today to tomorrow. So is it really a resource or is, or is it something we have to plan to have? You know, that's, that's what, what, I, what I'm not really sure. So what could I say there? Uh, I think at the moment I realized that my social life and my lifestyle are a part of my health and I can influence it, then from my point of view, it's a resource because I integrate it in my plan, but I have to be conscient. It's not just, um, you know, I have um, a weekend to spend and I don't think about it. I should always remember or ask to myself, uh, what is healthy for me? Uh, I'm doing this activity will uh, make me stronger or will do the contrary. I should be aware. So, for example, we all know no, movement and sport is a very important point. This is the ideal, it's like basic. But for example, in which type of environment are you living? Uh, do you have destructive habits or p positive rituals? Mm -hmm. In the morning, stand up out of your bed, first sentence, fuck, I have to go work. I say, stop, Jesse, stop, because she's licking my face and wants to go out. <laughs> but, but you say, stop, Jesse, I love you. <laughs> yeah, stop, it. stop, Jesse, I love you. <laughs> or, or do you have uh, positive rituals? I don't know, you stand up and uh, you pray, you say thank you to God. Or I have to be totally honest because that's, that's the privilege our followers and listeners have. I had a lot of bad times, bad, like with D, um, when, when I said, oh no, how will I survive this day? And it came like naturally, like oof, like naturally gifted. And I had to enforce myself to have a new, um, a, a new lifestyle, Time. like, like a morning ritual, like you're telling, to be grateful. And this was so unnatural like to do 50 push-ups in the morning right after you fell down the, the bed. It's really strange because it's just talking with yourself and thinking a little bit, okay, for, for what I'm, uh, I am really thankful, but it stuck by and now it's really something I do totally randomly. So, oh, I'm happy to having the chance to do today a podcast with Nuno. Oh, I'm really happy to do that and that and that. So I'm thankful in advance sometimes, I'm thankful in ba thinking back. It's really becoming something very, very strange, which I always also think about it. Hmm, this is becoming something naturally, like like uh, like months or years before when I had a bad, bad time, for example. Yeah, uh, you're splitting apart from your partner or you're changing jobs. It comes naturally. So that's a very cool thing what you're saying, because it does... A lot of people don't think that way about morning rituals. And it's the best advice I could ever have taken. No, it's, it's a seed. It's a seed you put in the day. A new seed in a new day, no? And um, the, Americ the American way, they would say a new day, a new life, a new day, a new challenge, a new day, new chances. Yeah. But now more seriously, <laughs> it's a seed. If I stand up in a bad mood with a negative uh, uh, mindset... Mm. What can I expect? But what you said touched me a lot now because the habits are very powerful. And perhaps when you change an habit at the beginning may feel very strange. Always, but, always. But you did not give up. You kept going with this new habit and suddenly it was a normal part of your mm -hmm. life uh, without effort. And I mean, sorry guys, but to make change in our life we need to fight. We need to deserve it. We need to, to move on. We cannot j do act like yesterday and yeah. think tomorrow will be different. Exactly. We, you need an effort, no? Yeah. Also a very important point here. Do you spend time with toxic people and just accept it as normal? This is a very important topic in, in, uh, in our health management. Uh, the energy around us, it can be in our apartment. Do we take care about our apartment? You feel good there, it's a good energy. The people you meet, they take your energy or they give you energy. Um, many people don't relate that 
to, to health, but it's a very important point of our health. We could do actually in separate podcast about that. What's actually a toxic person? What's actually a toxic relationship or a toxic friendship? Because for, for me, there are a lot of points which you could, um, you could say, okay, look guys, this is the certain way you have to live by this person is a toxic person go away there's a there's a very very big gap in between and um just just a, a, a short a short story it happened yesterday i went out to the dog park and uh, with my dog obviously not just not just by <laughs> me and she has not, she has like this this uh, yeah. she looks like a lamp because she had an issue on her oh uh, on her <laughs> anal glands it was infected. It was swollen. I had to go to the emergency with her. She got a uh, surgery and phew, drama, drama, drama. So um, a day later, yesterday, I went to the dog park and was on the telephone. And the uh, older, older woman came by and talked with me while she was seeing that I'm on the telephone. So I said, I'm sorry, I'm on the telephone. Please, I can't understand the person or you. I have just to end my call. And then I ended my call. And then I said, how can I help you? And she just asked, yeah, where's the water? So I'm not working here. I don't know where's the water. Oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. So, so from right away, maybe a little bit crazy. I don't know. What I did then is just friendly. Hey, have a good day. And then she continued to talk. And so I said, sorry, I turned my back to you. I can't understand the word. What did you say? And she was like mumbling, like blah, 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 so something like that. And so I said, I can't understand you. So she, so she turned around with the, her back to me and still was talking with me. So normally I would say, hey, I, I have to leave. I don't care. But the last few weeks, I really, I'm really trying to be more social which is really weird, which is really hard, to be honest. And to be social is not the same that you say you are social. It's very, very different. Thing. So I, I stuck by it and I, want, I didn't want to confront her. I didn't want to, to fight or, or anything. I just wanted to really listen and really also understand her. So that, sorry, madame, I can't understand a word. Please, if you want to talk to me, you have to turn around. Otherwise, I can't understand you. So she turned around and told me a lot of things. In, in the short version, to be honest, she was a little bit of racist because she said, you people, I'm not, I don't know if you are from here. So I said, listen, I don't know what you mean, but I'm a long time here in Basel. If you mean Switzerland also, I'm a long time in Switzerland. Let's think that you didn't mind, mean, mean that. But wh why are you asking? Yeah, well, maybe your rules are differently than by us. You don't have to be on the phone when you are with your dog. So I said, oh, okay, I didn't know that. I thought that, no, I know that it's nothing on your, of your business when I'm on, on the phone, but okay, we'll check that out. And then so she, she continued. So we had a consent. I said, sorry, which I'm not really sure that I should have said. Just for an example, what's a toxic person for me? Because... I went with the best um, um, best uh, what, intentions and I didn't want to show her I'm, I'm more intelligent or more or whatever. And also she offended me in a way which I could have understood wrong and said, oh, you're racist. I didn't. I just said, hey, listen, I don't know what you're meaning, but I'm from Basel. I speak fluently Swiss German. I understand you. I can't understand you when you're with your back to me, that and that. And then, now that's the example what I wanted to tell you, which, which is fascinating when you say toxic people. And we will do a separate podcast of that. Then another person came in with, her, with his small dog. A really cool looking guy, like piercings and tattoos and that, young, don't know, maybe my age. I'm not, I'm not the youngest anymore. But he came in and he didn't hear the beginning of our discussion of mine and the, the, the old, uh, older woman. And he right away just pu picked the words out, which I was, I was telling to her, listen, uh, she, saw, she said, leave the park if you can behave. So I said, what are you meaning with behaving? I'm, I was leaving. You stopped me. So am I leaving? Am I leaving? I will. 
I thought you want so, so you know just clearing things up it was really unfriendly and really weird but in a way then the, the younger man came and said there is no rule that you can't pick up the phone when you are with your dog what's a crazy rule here in the park every dog has to be um, free and everything and the women like she was talking to me continued to talk with the with the with the guy maybe she was crazy in, in the end we don't know but what I, what I was really curious about is the interactions between a lot of people, like mm. like the last few weeks. The guy said, go away, old crazy beep. And he turned around. That was his way to deal with that. So who was a toxic person? Mm -hmm. Was it me? Because in the end, that's a, that's a funny thing. In the end, I was a toxic person because if, if I would just if ignore the whole situation, I would just have lived. And maybe, maybe the, the woman would have lived also and no nothing happened. But because I wanted to confront things, the, the woman was really like not sure why, was saying things maybe she will regret. Mm. And the third person, <laughs> one didn't want to discuss. So for every three persons, I think... There was there was not a good ending of the conversation. I'm thinking she was maybe racist. The guy's thinking she's maybe I don't know crazy. She's thinking the young people are rude. So people, when you want to avoid toxic persons, is very a big topic. <laughs> just to, <laughs> just to tell you the the, to, the total story, which is crazy. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh. so, so you know, I wrote, do you spend time with toxic people? And then I could write. And how do you cope with yeah. toxic situations? <laughs> so then, <laughs> do you have enough time in the nature, enjoying fresh air and sunshine? Do you have time for recovering and relaxation? Are you always over busy with your job and career? Do you meet your friends often enough? Do you enjoy hobbies and cultural activities? This is all social life, no? Mm -hmm. But why uh, I extend myself so much here? Because we should understand this is a part of our health. Um, in the competitive um, job mm -hmm. life, we are a lot of time on the stress and fighting and achieving. And this is for me like yin and yang. All these nice things is a rebalancing of our mind, emotion, also decreasing our rhythm. We could call it is, is a rhythm in the performance, no? this activity and recovery. No? And this is not to underestimate um, when we meet people we trust, good friends, old friends, suddenly you feel I'm seven years old again. You are like a kid and all the troubles and the future, everything disappears. You are just relaxed, easy. Mm -hmm. How good is that for my immune system? It's very good. It's very good for all, all my system, no? So I like very much that idea that the social life is a part uh, from the he our health management. There are also studies about this topic, and eh? it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, yes, this is already in the, the new definition from the WHO, no? So I'm coming to an end. <laughs> the last topic today is... Um, Consumerists' attitudes. Yes. So the consumerist attitude in, in the health, no? We generally tend to believe that somebody more qualified as we are will take care of our health. This can eventually be true if we let go till the break-even point. I'm not saying we don't need doctors. Please, nobody understand me wrong here. We need doctors and we are thankful for doctors and thankful for medicine. Mm -hmm. But a big, a big part of the health is a prevention. And generally, we let it go till we need help. And then, yes, perhaps, I still say perhaps, we need somebody more qualified that, that we are. But perhaps also because from the beginning, we consider, I don't know about health. So I let the things go, and I know it's going too far. I will be fixed. I will get some help. I will get some medicine, some medicament, whatever. So what, what you're saying is like our behavior when we buy, for example, clothes, we don't have to know how to do clothes. We buy them, we consume, and we throw it away. But the same ad attitude we can't have for our health. You, we have to know about more. You, we have to know about that more. You, you make a perfect bridge. Now let's speak about two different things. We have on, 
on the one hand, what we call the, the rational intelligence, no? And this makes us believe that we need uh, to understand, always to understand, you know, to understand logically. And then we have the um, intuitive intelligence. Let's make an example um, about illness. So many times, so many, and I know everybody listening today made this experience. You are coping with a situation mm -hmm. and you are not in harmony with this situation. Something is not right for you. You are not with the right person, not the right place, not the right job, what, whatever. But you don't understand it. You don't know. But long time before, your body starts to tell it to you. Mm -hmm. You have insomnia. You cannot sleep. You have um, stomach pain. You are a little bit uh, shaky. Mm -hmm. So many symptoms are there long time before that our super clever intellect mm -hmm. realize what is going on. What I try to say here, we have a superior intelligence, an intrinsic inner wisdom. I, I repeat the word wisdom because we are, we are like nature. Mm -hmm. When the disharmony is there, it will be recognized. Yeah. But because our head is so stubborn and sometimes so complicated, mm -hmm. many times the body, which is a, an intelligent itself, will speak to us. And because this is so powerful, exactly because of this, I mean, we should never underestimate our inner wisdom. It's always there. If I know it or don't know it, if I analyze it, if I speak about it, it's simply there. That's why this is something very personal that we should take care and learn to listen and to trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like, I like what, you, what you said about the intelligence uh, from the head and from the body. What I think is also um, what you mean is the consciousness and unconsciousness because we have also psychologists which work with us about our unconscious behavior. I'm, I'm not sure if you meant that, but when I have the issue with clients who are betraying themselves, like for example, they have a good job, they are very smart in their head, they are like very successful in their business or careers or whatever, but they are very un unsecure when it's coming, um, when it's about her, her, her physical well-being or her look or his look be fair both both genders and they have issues that came that come for example at night come out like sugar cravings or like self-destructive thoughts or like they have to um like um take not not drugs but like calm like a, a glass of wine or pills to calm down so when they lose the control of their head they, they, they feel the body or the unconscious that something is not good and they just what what they do is just like they, they do something that to ignore it more mm -hmm. or best best case you told me about the homeostase when it's already shifted to a bad side for example by people who are doing too much in work are not sleeping enough what they want to want with O is recuperate and relax. So they do spinning classes in the, in the night or go five o'clock in the morning and <laughs> uh, high intensity training because they are all on cortisol, on stress, stress, stress. They are putting the work on, but it's like with full speed against the wall. And suddenly, some sometime the wall will come and you are with your full Ferrari against the wall. Doesn't matter if Ferrari or Fiat, a wall is a wall. So this is the un the interesting part when I um, have clients. I, I see it. What you mean exactly with these little little um, examples? You can mm. achieve a lot with your head, but your body will take its break if you want it or you don't. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's very fascinating the, what you say, and it's, it's very symptomatic for our society, no? Actually, we, we don't know better. We don't know better. 
we we don't see and we don't want to accept the, um, the value of recovering, slowdown, softness. We think we are always to be a doer, and um, a winner. Uh, so it's always full power. And when this strategy ends up without result, we don't have another strategy. We don't know what to do there. Uh, in my culture of martial arts, mm -hmm. this would be the time for Tai Chi, for Qigong, for meditation, for yoga, uh, things which turn turning more inward mm -hmm. and with the quality of another rhythm, uh, the quality of slowing down. No, But you, you ask me, how was that possible that we lost this connection to ourselves? Yeah, the, 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 the question was, how can we, how, can, how did we, um, how did we gave up the responsibility? Mm -hmm. how, how that so to, to, be, yeah. to be very fair, to be very fair, I don't know if we had it before, but for example, uh, some culture like the Taoists, they had it for sure. For, I see many, many answers. Mm -hmm. One answer is, um, in, especially in the Western culture, we, we get this very mechanical view of the human body, like a machine which can be fixed by somebody else. So this mechanical point of view, this automatically disconnects you from your emotion, your soul, your body, because some there, out there, is one foot, is my foot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. something there to fix something there mm -hmm. and I will not make a relationship between my foot and my behavior my habits, my emotions even my food because it's a part of the machine so this mm -hmm. is one answer the other answer is we have this blind belief in qualifications authority jobs, mm -hmm. authority, diplomas And we tend to believe that somebody is more qualified as we are to know about ourselves. Again, I have a huge respect for, for, the, for doctors and for the medicine. And for sure, they know much, 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 much more. Mm -hmm. But the point is not there. The point is why me as a human being, I abandon the responsibility for my health and I give it to somebody else. I'm sure not one doctor wants you to do that. If a doctor is doctor by heart, he wants you to take care of yourself mm -hmm. first with your own energy in your own power. And then at the end of the process, if you can't help yourself anymore, perhaps to visit him. No, So I think You, you see, I get a little bit temperamental when I go to this topic because it makes me sad. It makes me really sad that we have this inner wisdom. We are, we are the nature. We have so much insight. Mm -hmm. And we, because of beliefs, we lose that connection and we give the power over our life to other instances. Can be psycholog, can be doctor, whatever. It's not so important. The important is why do we not believe anymore that we are enough and that we know inside what is our past, what is good for us, what makes me happy, what makes me sad, what makes me healthy, why we don't know it anymore, no? I, I, think, I think I can tell you um, one thought, which is maybe in this direction going. I look today a little bit uh, white. I'm maybe not so, not so healthy today, but it's just lightning. <laughs> um, the thing is I, I was thinking about that a lot the last week actually which was really funny because you sent me the topics from today today not last week I think our education which okay I, I will be honest totally full full spoiler I'm actually um, working on a book I'm writing a book yeah me it, wa it will be maybe an audio book to be fair <laughs> <laughs> But I want to, I want to, I'm writing a book and I'm just um, throwing in my ideas. And uh, one topic which always was in my mind is the education system, the education and also how we will, how we were raised by our parents. And my, both parents are actually um, academics. So 
they were also educating me in at home and also um, forming my beliefs in education and the school school system in degrees in authority and that you have to work to have grades and the grades are telling the world how good you are how valuable you are it doesn't matter which is like a bit a little bit like far fetched but it doesn't matter what you do it matters what you are on the paper so that's that's like the short version of how i see the education system in a nutshell so really like mm. a little bit exaggerated the problem with that is that the conversation i had with my parents or with a lot of clients which have like my age their parents also told them yeah doctors have every response teachers are the highest uh, um, form of uh, authority in school you you if you have skepticism on a topic doesn't matter read what's in the book learn what's in the school from uh, ask from you and i learned a lot of stupid things which i never have ever used in my life after the school you know so this is this were the topics last week and what i found out is one thing this week which um, the lockdown was longer which every one of us were expecting i th- i heard a lot of sentences like this we did our homework we did everything we have we we could do the numbers are that low it's not proven that 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 and then the frustration that even seeing and knowing that the for example the BAG in our country uh, n- did not really care and did lockdown anyway in the fitness branch in the fitness sector that made me not sad but that made me a little bit like of really thoughtful because i i was not thinking that that would in any way um do something it's a crisis for everyone there is no higher power there is no higher political person which is calm or wise and waiting and we are we are the panic group and someone is really calm and will help us and will have the solution there is no one we are all in the stupid flesh that we are monkeys and so when that when this when that frustration came so we did our homework and i listened to this word really carefully and that came a lot we did our homework we put the glasses on we did the sprays we did the separation and still and this frustration is not bad and i'm not saying in no regards that i don't respect that and i don't mm. understand it it's actually because i understand that that i was thinking hmm interesting because the word was not um was not just randomly picked up homework i was a guy which i really didn't do my homework so much and my colleagues a lot of my colleagues um studied after me when i was in uh, middle school they they went to higher schools and studied then one psychology the other one economics the other one even politics really fascinating intelligent guys but after years when i when i'm talking with them they are in a mind um not in a mi- mental state they are in a in a mindset which is you do you get a grade you do you get acceptance you do there's some always like reacting like um not really anticipating that maybe something very chaotic very unexpected will happen which is which is really like to the topic to you, to to you again going i think it's our education that we are having like problems to think that hey not even a doctor has to have every answer there is no super higher force uh, over us even berse now in in switzerland or in the other countries they are really really struggling i'm not really sure that they are not doing a good job in their eyes they are doing a great job and there will be of course years later then and conclusion and they will say mm, maybe this was not so good this was catastrophic this was bad that, 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 that. but we are like putting our work so i did everything right and still instead of looking where could we do more where could we do better 
and just accept what's not good like an illness mm -hmm. i'm not really i i thanks i'm uh, healthy but when this catastrophe came this was my first thought how people are reacting and i'm not really sure that the same people which are reacting to catastrophes in that way in a negative way will react to an illness or to another mm. terrible phase in their lives differently they will do mm. and say and react the same way mm -hmm. because they are just expecting i did that now i took the pill now i did this t time of exercise now i rested this long and still i have the illness what's yeah. happening you see if i try to make a bridge to what you say um the pandemic is here oh, this is clear but in, in, in matter of health, if we really speak about prevention, our goal, goal would be not to have to react. Mm -hmm. You remember in another podcast, we spoke about this garden, yeah. which nice seeds. If we always take care about ourselves, um, conscience, consciously, um, we should keep this balance, this balance. It's interesting what you say, because it sounds extreme. Let's see, the pandemic would be the last stage of of a, of, of an illness, no? Mm -hmm. So, because this also exists, we can make so much prevention as we want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can come to la last stage. I believe deeply that if you all your life you behave like a victim, these are the circumstances. This happen. Uh, it can be very hard when when life hits you hard. If all your life you behaved with responsibility knowing that you are you shaping your life uh, you are somewhere be, for a good reason then i think you can couple uh, handle very differently with extreme situations difficult situations uh, what we call destiny uh, it's another um, base of acting and, and feeling mm -hmm. but i don't want to lose the the topic for me the most important point is to remember, we should not give responsibility to others. This makes us weak, vulnerable, manipulable. And also angry. In also the end, angry. Frustration, for sure. And uh, <laughs> it will also cost the loss because we, we will, we will uh, create a lot of expense for the health system yeah. uh, in a not necessary way, just giving the, <laughs> the responsibility outside, no? And for, for the end, for my side, I, I had this dream, no, that um, because I, I really believe we, we shape our life and we shape our health. And I thought about a school system mm -hmm. which, which we had every single day, one or two hours of movement. I don't say sport, I say movement. So relationship to your body. Your body is so much important than your head, no? Mm -hmm. Um, a school system where we would have education about, I don't say psychology, about what is an emotion? How can I deal with my emotions? Yeah. A school system where we would be uh, three times a week outside in the nature and uh, putting something in the earth. Um, Having the respect for nature, you, you say. Exactly. Yeah. So this is, I realize this is very utopic, utopic. Mm -hmm. But I think that parents, which are conscient, uh, they still can teach that to their kids. No, that emo yeah, I would wish that. I, emotion, I would wish that. movement, and contact to the inner mm -hmm. nature. If you learn that very young, mm -hmm. and you are thankful and conscient of these things, I think you you will be able to manage your health in a totally different way for all your life, and not only your physical health. But your mental health, which are very interdependent, no? Yeah. So that was for me the topic: be your own doctor. Injury doesn't come, or illness doesn't come like this. You, we can prevent a lot by our behavior and our conscient art of living. Art of living. Yeah, that's a really an art. When yeah. you say, when you, when you see it that way, then it's an art. Yeah. Yeah. Well, something which is a gift, no? Like life, we should handle like an art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not just uh, 
eat McDonald's and drink, drink Coca Cola. Well, oh, I, di- so, I did. So he's no advertising. Yeah, I, I did actually <laughs> last week eat something from McDonald's, which I'm not really proud of, but they have a lo- good, uh, tasty apple apple taschen <laughs> and milkshakes. <laughs> you will survive that. <laughs> this is in my education. I was not feeling really good. This was before I went to vacation. I needed junk food. Yeah. Like in my school days. Funny, funny, funny. No, no, I thank you very, very much for this in, interesting and uh, really important uh, topic today, which I think we have a lot of ideas for upcoming uh, things. For example, as usual, I think what would be interesting, uh, interesting is um, how we could describe our wishes for a new uto- utopic future. Because I actually like the um, themes of my book, which I'm writing, and I'm not really the writer guy, which is that. Uh, Again, the, the, the thrilling adventure for me to write the book in English, so I practice my English, is what I would wish to say my parents, like in retrospective, or maybe back in time with, uh, with, uh, when I would have a time machine, which is paradox to the grandfather theory. But anyway, what would I have to tell them hey listen treat me a little bit like that tell me a little bit more about that not like this a little bit less like that what do i wish i would have known from the beginning on like you said i for example now a a little preview i was making 10 rules like moses but not not in a biblical sense 10 rules as a parent what you could give your child before he or she is five years old because five years, they say this is a very more like mm. they are like sponges, like they are really looking and copying everything you do. And so it's, it's really fr- fascinating because what's what are five years? Nothing. And you're forming a human being that is possibly, maybe the greatest artist, greatest politician, maybe the greatest philosopher in the next generation, in the next 30 years. So that's that's a little preview of what I'm writing and what I'm actually thinking about. So one topic you said is very cool, being more in nature. Because I really like was scared of nature. Like, to be honest, I don't like woods because of the ticks and of the whatever is flying there. I'm not really knowing what's going on there. So maybe that would help had helped me a lot as a child. Like a lot of my friends going out with her parents to the woods to know the nature, to know also the stillness, the tranquility going in the woods and the, or to the mountains. And another topic is to talk, to discuss, to also put your emotions in words, which a lot of grown-ups don't do proper. And this is exactly the same. You say, you're saying the problems we have are emotional problems. And what are we doing? We are like putting the emotions in our stomach and never let them da- let them out till they come out and ruin our lives as a cancer as a, yeah yeah this is a topic i never would like i'm i'm not qualified enough to to speak about it but in my mind in my naive mind as a non uh, professional in that topic i think that cancer represents a lot of um things we already know not that every type of cancer, I mean, this is disrespectful when I would say like a five-year-old cancer patient is uh, responsible for himself. No, I don't mean that way. I, I mean I mean it as a mind map that it's like cancer. Like we are building problems in our health, even mental or physical, that is growing, growing, growing. And it's like cancer spreading. Mm, I don't mean cancer because maybe one day we will find out how to prevent cancer. Maybe. I'm not sure. But um, that that would be what I was telling. And you said it like, like cancer. It's, it's growing. It can like take over all our thoughts, our body, till it's too late. Until not even a professional could help us. Not the best coach, not the best doctor. So yeah, hope this podcast helps had helped our listeners and our um, fans of JFP TV and also of Nuno Damaso to um, have a little bit more of ideas how to prevent and also how to think about your health, how to think about your responsibility to be healthy, to be more preventive for your health. Of course, you will you will tell me the same thing. 
our podcasts are a little bit more on the philosophical, more in the metaphysical um, level. If you would wish to have more insights in practical tips or, for example, also stories, because when you have a topic, I what I already thinking is, oh, I have, I have a story and we can also do a podcast full of stories, full of our like experiences with athletes, with persons, with clients. We did not uh, telling the names, but just maybe giving you insights that every one of us, even me, even you yourself also, we are not perfect. And this wisdom you told is something we have to rediscover. It's not just you are born wise or you have every answer for every question right away. You have to yeah, really like discover it again, like refine it because... Um, in the end, when you are at the, at the point that you are as a holistic health coach, I think a lot of topics that you are um, talking about are very logical for you. You see the mm -hmm. connections mm -hmm. and that the, the hard part is, I think, in the beginning, that is your education, your mindset is fighting against the new knowledge or the new mm -hmm. viewpoints that someone is giving you. Mm -hmm. It's totally normal. I would have said the same thing mm. two years ago, like uh, about veganism, veg veganism. Like I uh, invited Nora here last time, two hours of full podcast. We we have to still break the record, two hours of talking. Nora, thank you very much. It was very interesting. Um, to talk about nutrition in that way that we did and also to be interested to see how uh, differently points of views can be is something not a lot of people can. Mm -hmm. And so this is very fascinating for me, also for, for you, I think. It's, because it, this is nutrition. It's nutrition, not to, to share, to accept another opinion, to think about it, to interact. This is, this is no nutrition for the mind. Exactly. Uh, and also is an opening. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I like what you say. No, I think we, we, sh we are sharing opinions without pretension. And if something can be interesting for somebody, that's enough. <laughs> that's true. With that words, I, can, I think we can we can stop our <laughs> podcast, our end end our podcast. Thank you very much, guys, for joining in again to a new episode of JFP TV. I thank you a lot, Nuno. Thank you very much. Uh, I see you next Friday. Are you in? This next Friday is twenty sixth. <laughs> I, need, I, need, I, need, I need to check my agenda we will see, we'll see. <laughs> you guys thank you very much for joining and I see you next week with Nuno or without stay tuned, stay healthy and stay positive we will go through this catastrophic time together, stronger like always, just with power <laughs>